the News Hour with Gord Steinke and Linda Steele. Good evening, Linda is on assignment tonight. Mission Impossible has become a reality in Chile. Starting late last night, one by one, miners brought to freedom. Here's a live look right now at the mine site tonight. At first, it wasn't believed the man would be freed until Christmas, but right now, nearly all of the miners have been brought to the surface. 30 of the 33 men trapped beneath the earth for nearly two months have all been reunited now with their families. And as Kerry Sanders reports, every rescue went off without a hitch. Again, and again, and again, prayers answered. It all began shortly after midnight local time, as a rescue engineer strapped into the 26-inch wide escape capsule named Phoenix 2, and then began the still unproven man trip below, 2,040 feet down a shaft through some of the hardest rock on earth. 17 minutes, 22 seconds later, first contact. It worked on the way down, and soon, as a billion viewers around the world watched the image like a transmission from the moon, 31-year-old Florenzio Avalos would prove with this first trip to the surface, the capsule worked both ways. At 11 minutes after midnight, as Florenzio was the first to end his 70-day crisis, his son, 7-year-old Byron, touched everyone's hearts. A father and son finally reunited. Up next, 39-year-old Mario Sepulveda. When he cleared the escape pod, his celebration thrilled a nation. He surprised Chile's president and rescuers with souvenirs, pieces of rock from the cave-in. His energy belying a man trapped in a mine for more than two months. They now call him Super Mario. He hugged and kissed just about everyone. And then said of his ordeal, I met God. I met the devil. God won. With each emotional rescue, the tempo has picked up. The Minister of Mines tweeted, round trips now take less than an hour. No one is needed a stretcher. In fact, all the miners look remarkably fit. Still, paramedics use one into the triage area. Where the survivor's first request is met, a hot shower. The one miner whose love life played out while he was down came up late this afternoon. Yoni Barrios was met not by his wife today, but by his mistress. The two women discovered each other when this crisis began. No matter how long it takes, Chile's president and the first lady are personally welcoming each miner to the surface. All right, and we're taking a live shot right now from Chile. Uh, and uh, what, we're, what we've heard now, you're looking right now, live shots here. This is the 31st miner who has just uh, come up safe and sound uh, after being trapped for two months underground. He's made the journey just, uh, just fine, as you can see. And right now, the big smile on his face as he's being reunited. Uh, with his family, and uh, it is, must be just quite a feeling there. We're going to keep you posted uh, as the final miners here come up. There are two left as, uh, as this progresses throughout our newscast. It's been an enormous effort, as you can imagine, organizing this rescue operation with help coming from all around the world, including local company Metal Logic Inspection Services. Shane Jones has more on how the Edmonton-based testing company has helped out. Lane Sieben is watching live coverage of the Chilean miners being rescued from his Metalogic office in East Edmonton. It was quite exciting, actually, um, being able to watch it live, especially on TV. Um, obviously, it's a huge humanitarian effort, um, being able to rescue these miners. It's pretty amazing. They've been down there for, uh, for such a long time. The emotional scenes provide another aspect of interest for Sieben and his co-workers. For the past three weeks, their company helped make sure the rescue tunnel sleeve was up to par. We were actually mobilized down there and expected to be down there until the middle of November. So it was great news for us to hear that the uh, process was going that good and the fabrication process went uh, a lot quicker. Metalogic Inspection Services uses metaphase ultrasonic testing to determine if a pipe's weld is sufficient. What we have is two ultrasonic probes. They're coupled on either side of the um, sleeve. And what they're doing is they're sending ultrasonic energy into the well. It's similar to how an ultrasound is performed during a pregnancy. The traditional and more time-consuming method is radiography. 
There's also no need to clear the area of workers for health safety reasons. The time saved using ultrasonics instead of radiography, especially with this job, is immense. And essentially that's going to speed up the uh, fabrication process and essentially it's going to increase the, uh, the speed of the rescue mission itself. So far so good as the trapped miners continue to emerge from the ground below. A well-earned sense of pride continues to grow for Metalogic as well. We've always had a sense of pride around here with the uh, services we deliver, but uh, certainly given the humanitarian side of things in this particular case, the, uh, the pride levels uh, come up uh, quite a few notches. Shane Jones, Global News. Metalogic's ultrasonic process for testing of the rescue sleeve required four operators, two of them responding within hours from Thailand. When